Well, hello everybody. I am Jay Leonard J, and this is my very, very first gigging guitar rig. Well, welcome to Jay's Toolbox. This is just a, a little spot where I talk about the gear that I use, you know, on a daily basis, stuff that really means a lot to me and how I get the sounds I like out of those pieces of gear. So I've been doing this series for a while. Uh, this is brought to you by uh, my Patreon subscribers. They made this video happen and they also came up with the idea for this video. Uh, I got sent a private message on what, you know, gear that I use when I first started playing professionally and oh, I got so nostalgic. I started uh, pulling up some old videos of me uh, when I was just out of college trying to establish myself in the city. And uh, I had a really fun, cool, small portable setup when I first started playing guitar. And obviously as I got you know a little bit older, more established, I started uh, doing more arena shows and bigger shows and stuff. The gear changed a lot, but like the original, original package, oh. It's really cool stuff. So I put it all together. I got all the pedals out of my uh, my cupboard and I put them back in the original case I had. This is like a little clarinet thing. I put the, all the pedals and wire them all the way exactly how I did it. I got my old telly over here and I got my old amp and I'm gonna show you exactly what I, what I did with them and how I got the sound. So uh, let's start off with the guitar and the amp. This is my guitar, 1968 Fender Telecaster. Still is my all time favorite guitar that I own. Uh, it is uh, relatively original. Obviously, there's a lot of things that had to be replaced due to wear and tear. It is an old piece of equipment, uh, but all the most important stuff is still there. Most importantly, that neck pickup. This is the original super warm old school Fender sound. <laughs> And the bridge pickup, obviously, really, really bright. And because the neck pickup is super warm and the bridge is super bright, I got super, super cluck power in the middle position, too. I made a whole video just about this guitar. It's in the comment section below. I talk about all the details about it, the story, all the venues I play with it. This thing has been in small clubs. This is played in arenas, um, Caesars Palace Coliseum, and uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, MGM Grand Arena, and a bunch of stuff. So please check out that video. This is my amp. This is a good sell, uh, Super 17 uh, MK3. And this is a lovely, lovely piece of equipment. No one talks about this amp. It's not very, very popular. It's not the sexiest looking amp, but man, it sounds so, so good. I don't actually know Richard Goodsell. He's the guy that makes these. I don't know him personally. I, was, I went to a small guitar store uh, called Tapestry Music and they had it in the back. And I remember playing it and just thinking, oh man, this sounds so, so good. I had to get my hands on it and I, I did. Over the years, I've done lots of mods to it, changed the feed out. And I've also changed the handle. Uh, the tubes in here are EL84s. And because the cab is so small, I, it would eat those tubes alive. So I actually switched out the 84s for uh, uh, 7189, I believe, uh, tubes, which are the same, but they're just a little bit more sturdy so they don't get microphonic quite as quickly. And the sound is just... <laughs> so lovely with this amp. Only a tone knob, that's it. Has reverb and... What's most important for me, I gotta have tremolo and it has that lovely, just wonderful light. Like Isn't that awesome or what? I sold this amp. I got rid of it uh, to get a, a big amp. And uh, 
I missed it so much. Years later, I actually tracked down the original one. I wanted the one that I had and I found it and I bought it back. That's how much this amp means to me. I have so many great memories with it. Uh, my good sell, uh, Super 17. If you can find one, I think he still makes them. Get one, these are great. Okay, so I'm gonna go talk about my pedal board now. So this is a, a little clarinet case that I turned into a pedal board uh, and I made a little rig. Let's go look at it in the overhead camera and see what we got inside. So this is my original board. Uh, let's go break through all the little pieces I got going on here. That wah looks like a Vox wah. This is probably the oldest thing that I have on the board. Uh, I got this, my dad bought it for me. Jeez, when I was just a little kid. Um, the body is a Vox wah, but actually inside is a Tease R, uh, is it Real McCoy? RMC1, that, or it was an RMC2. And then I gutted the board and then just put in a bunch of weird components. I was like, you know, it's just trying to learn how to make pedals and build stuff. So I actually uh, highly modified version of a Tease RMC2 where I just hardwired my favorite values instead of having the, the pots on it. So it has a very unique kind of travel to it. You can see it's not an abrupt, it's very, very slow. So I have a lot of in-between sounds. So it's a very different taper than you see. Most of the times it just goes wah. This goes wah. <laughs> and I'll show you how that comes in handy later. Uh, I have the Polytune 2 uh, by TC Electronics. I have the black one. And the reason why is because uh, the white one has green and uh, red LEDs. And uh, this one has blue and white. And I like blue and white better because I'm colorblind in green and you know, red or green and yellow. It's all the same stuff to me. So it was always easier to see this. This was a present from my boys down at Rufus Guitar Shop uh, back in the day. And uh, this over here is my Proco Rat. I got this one from my aunt, like when I was really, really young. It was one of the first guitar pedals I ever got. And it is my Desert Island guitar pedal, probably my all time favorite pedal uh, in terms of uh, personal to me. And if I need to pick one pedal to use for like a bunch of stuff, it'd probably be the Poco Red because it's just so versatile. I use this for my overdrive sounds. I actually use the distortion box for my overdrive sounds. I like to keep the gain relatively low and it sounds really fantastic. This is the older one with the LM308, I think, chip. Uh, so it has a really nice sound to it. This is what it sounds like on. <laughs> So it does have a nice rock sound to it. So I do keep it a little bit on the bright side, a little bit on the, what do you call it, uh, lower gain side, because when I turn down my volume a little bit and use my bridge pickup, it has a nice kind of, you know, AC30 kind of breakup sound. And it also has, uh, when I go my neck pickup, it just has a nice little bluesy sound when I just turn down my volume knob a little bit too. the rat over the tube screamer because uh, I like the way the mids work with this uh, particular amp and I also like the fact that when I turn down the volume knob on a tube screamer I just find that things get really muddy where here it still stays relatively clear has still a nice quality to it and it just gets really nasty up top Really, really 
nice little thing. So I definitely use it for that mid gain, lower gain sounds. It just really excels in that. Up next is this. You might be wondering what's in this box. Uh, if you ask me, and I think you might know it if you watch the page a lot, my favorite fuzz is the uh, Jordan Boss tone. I really love that fuzz because it's, um, it's a very great solo. It has a great kind of mid range to it and it has a really good way it just kind of sticks out in the band mix, whereas some fuzzes they get kind of lost if you have a really big band. This really sticks out. I made my own boss tone, only I've done a bunch of little modifications to it. It changed kind of the input caps, uh, some of the way, how much power is going into it and uh, uh, screwed around a little bit with the clipping section to get it right where I wanted it. A little bit more f uh, warmer than the original, not quite as spitty, but I use this pretty much for any solo I did or if I wanted things to get gnarly, definitely this pedal here. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like a broken speaker. Just <laughs> and again, it cleans up in a nice way, not in a fuzz face way, but in a, you know, adds a little bit of treble. Again, I have this really warm neck pickup, so that little extra treble goes a long way. I love it. It's noisy. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, this is the exotic EP booster. Uh, I remember playing this pedal for the first time and it was so cool because it just made your clean tone magically better. This is actually a really earlier version where I think the new one, when the gain is all the way down, it's unity. Whereas this one, even if the gain's all the way down, there's still a boost. But just watch what it does to that uh, low mids and then what it does to the top end, it just like puts a little bit of cream on everything. Just wonderful. Like. always had the volume pretty much all the way down all the time. I just used it for uh, clean solos. Just to punch them out in a lovely way. And also you'll notice I have them after my gains. And that's the best place to put this pedal in my opinion. It really, what it does is it gets your overdrive or your fuzz or your distortion and it just makes it bigger and juicier and louder as opposed to just adding more sustain. I don't want more sustain. I just want it to sound bigger and more in your face. Uh, sometimes too much sustain, it doesn't, it doesn't sit well with a big band. Sometimes you just want more punch, more authority. And check out what it does. So if I have the uh, Proco Rat, and I'm just doing like my normal stuff. sound better? Oh, amazing. Now watch what it does to the fuzz. If you have uh, like a tone bender or a boss tone, um, anything, uh, anything with like a bit of a speedy character to it, put an exotic EP booster at the end of it and just watch how big your sound gets. Check this out. <laughs> I gotta turn this preamp down a bit. <laughs> it's so good. I, I'm getting like, 
I, I haven't heard that sound in a long time. That's awesome. Now, this is what I would do. I, that would be kind of like, if I needed a solo, if I was doing like a fuzz line, I just put the pedal by itself. When I did the solo, I turn it on with the exotic. And if I really wanted to stick it out, I would start pinning the wah to get a really good mid focus sound. <laughs> So just by moving the wah around and finding different spots, I was able to create more different shades of tones. And because that wah had such a nice, smooth, easy scope, there's so many different places I could put that tone to make my guitar sound like I had more overdrives on my board than I actually really did. Uh, the last thing on the board is the carbon copy. I remember back in the day, Everyone was just like rocking like a DD3, DD5, really clean delays, and then this thing came out. It was super warm, and it had like this modulation. It was like a DM2. It was just, it was really, really cool when it came out. Uh, now everyone's doing delays like this, so it's, you know, not the uh, novelty's worn out, but I remember this thing just being the best. And it did the self-oscillation thing. It was just really, really cool. Very uh, atmospheric and ethereal, great pedal. <laughs> my first gigging rig, isn't that cool? Uh, thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to the page. If you haven't, uh, check out the links in the description below. Uh, support, uh, the links help out the page, obviously. Support me on Patreon, they made this video happen. Thank you all Patreon subscribers. Uh, if there's any piece of gear here that you want me to dig into a little bit deeper, dig into this one, dig into my fuzz, or anything, or you wanna know a little bit more of the story, a little bit more of what's going on, uh, mods I did to it, please write it in the comment section below and I could probably hit it in another episode of Jay's Toolbox. Uh, that being said, I guess I'll see you all soon. Take care and goodbye.